My ducks, my swans, welcome to the pond. My name is Dorian from group82university.com, basketball, basketballceo.com, and basketball is a love language for me. NIL money secrets, every single hooper should know. You know, the NIL, for those y'all don't know what it is, that's name, image, and likeness. This was a... I don't know if it was a rule or a law or a, a what's the thing it used to be on Schoolhouse Rock, a bill that passed that now allows college athletes to use their name, image, and likeness to generate money for themselves. So they can have endorsements, they can have sponsorships, they can get involved with a collective on campus, and this allows them to make money. But the thing about this is that a lot of people that work in the world of athletics, they don't understand social media. They don't understand content creation. They think it's just, oh, well, you're super popular, and, you know, we're going to do this deal with you, and you're going to post it, and we're going to get a whole bunch of sales. And that's just not how any of this stuff works. To build a social media following, it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of stuff that's behind the scenes. Right now, y'all are listening to me or you are watching me. I had to set up this entire microphone setup. I had to set up my interface. I had to set up this camera. This is the second of three cameras that I have. I have a light here. I got these lights that are down here. It took me thousands of videos to get this set up to the way that I want it. When I come in the room, I can set things up in 15 seconds and I'm ready to film. Thousands of videos, tens of thousands of hours. I have put in my work, and that's why you can see on all my social media platforms, I have a pretty decent following. Outside of Twitter, we're going to start building that up. But 260,000 on YouTube, 124,000 on Instagram, 98,000 on Facebook, 50, 60,000 on TikTok. That is from hard work. And when someone is a collegiate athlete, specifically a college basketball player, they aren't focused on building content. They aren't focused on making content. They are focused on trying to be the best athlete that they can be. But now in this new age of collegiate athletics in which we're in, you have to be able to generate and build content too. Why is this? Because NIL deals are completely dependent on how many social media followers that you have. The more followers that you have, the more money that you're going to get. So you got a lot of people out here who are buying fake followers. I'm going to tell you this right now. If you buy fake followers, every NIL deal you get after that one isn't going to be worth anything. You can see whose followers are real. You can see whose followers are fake. And there's so many metrics out there now where people can run audits on your account to see what's real and to see what's fake. There's no reason to do that. Just like you got good at your basketball skills because you go to the gym and do individual workouts. Because you watch film with your coaches, because you go to the weight room, because you run stadium steps, because all the sacrifices you made in middle school and AAU and high school has gotten you to the point now where you are a D1, D2, D3, NAIA junior college athlete that is now starting to get a social media following. All those things that you had to do to build yourself up to get this athletic scholarship is going to be a very similar thing for you to build your social media up so you can start getting NIL deals. And just like you had to have coaches and trainers on the court, you got to have somebody that can coach you off the court. Fortunately for you, you either A, clicked on me because you saw me somewhere, B, your algorithm loves me and loves you so they delivered you to me, or C, someone who loves you or cares about the future of your career decided to send you this video because they want you to get this bag. And because of that, I am the person who has the Division One basketball experience, that has the NBA experience, that has the high school basketball experience, that has the AAU experience, that has the Division Two basketball experience, while simultaneously being someone who's album charted number one on iTunes. I got 500,000 followers on all social media platforms and over 500 million views. I'm the perfect combination of both. God gave me all this talent and all this treasure, and now I got the time to break it down for you. The first thing that you got to know about NIL, if you really want to build up your following, is you have to choose a platform. I know y'all heard me talk about all the platforms where I got all these followers or whatnot, but initially for me, I keep it real with y'all, man. I hate social media. I, I just didn't like it. I still don't really like it. I look at it totally different than I used to. 
I used to look at it as like, this is where everybody is going to show off. It's all in folks' business and it's gossip and it's arguments and people with fake body parts showing this and that. Folks acting like they got money. I, that's just not who I am, man. I ain't in all that. I don't care about the folks' business like that. But when I started looking at social media as a distribution platform, this is the new television and this is my own TV studio, and I can reach millions and millions and millions of people across the world for free, then get paid from it, that flipped my entire mentality about how I use social media. I don't use social media as a content consumer. I use social media as a content creator. Even when I'm scrolling and I'm consuming content, I'm really doing research. What thumbnail did they use? What effects did they use in that thumbnail? What kind of font is that? How big are their letters? Where do they place the title? What letters, what letters do they put on the thumbnail, but they also put something else inside of the, of the title? What's the topic of this video? What's the hook of this video? How are they keeping me from the beginning and getting me all the way to the end? I'm constantly doing research. I'm constantly analyzing to see what has worked for other people that caught my attention that made me click on their stuff. And these are the same things I replicate to my own audience. So to do research, that means you have to be on these platforms. And you got to find a platform that you really like. For me, the platform that I always loved the most was YouTube. Now, I didn't get my social media career started on YouTube. I got my social media career started essentially, well, on Facebook. I was in college when Facebook came out. Side note, I'm 38, finna be 39 on August 2nd. So, yes. I was in college when Facebook came out, and it was lit. was no rules. Adults didn't know about it. We were wilding. But even then, I used my personal Facebook account to talk to people from all over the country, all over the world that know me personally, and I was using that to see, like, wow, when I talk about this, this gets a lot of likes. This gets a lot of comments. Folks want to argue about this, or maybe this is stuff that gets shared a lot, and I was testing things there, and I shifted over to Periscope. For those of y'all that know about Periscope, it was a video streaming platform. I loved Periscope. That was the only social media platform that I loved. It was a video streaming platform. It was just straight live video where anybody from any, anywhere in the world could watch you. And I built up my following on Periscope. I spent so many hours on Periscope. And I started to learn what worked to capture people's attention. And that's how I became so good speaking to the camera. After Periscope, I don't want to say it died down, but Twitter just didn't know what they had with it, and now it's completely gone. I had to take my audience that was on Periscope, and I had to go somewhere else. And at that time, the place to go was Instagram. And I am not a big fan of Instagram. Still to this day, I'm not a big fan of Instagram. Out of all my social media platforms, I feel like Instagram does the least for me from a creator perspective. And they don't really pay like that. But that's where all the eyes were. So I knew I had to go over there and I had to figure out how Instagram works. But then once I figured out how Instagram works, I found myself kept coming back to YouTube. Because YouTube is where I went to learn. YouTube is where I went to get ent entertained. YouTube is what captured my attention for hours. And once I applied what I learned on Facebook and on Periscope and on Instagram to YouTube, that's when my social media career really took off. So you have to find a platform that works for you. You have to find a platform that you love. You might love Instagram. If you love Instagram, you need to study Instagram. You might love YouTube. You need to study YouTube. You need to be on there and asking yourself the exact same questions that I was just asking myself about why all of these things work. Because if you try to get good at Instagram and at TikTok and at Facebook and at YouTube and at Twitter all at the same time, there's going to be some overlap. There's going to be some things that work across the board, but they, each platform is different, and each platform pays attention to certain things. They all want to keep people on the platform as long as they possibly can so they can put as many advertisements in front of, these plat in front of their audience so they can make as much money as they can from advertisers. That's how social media works. You make a dope video. They put ads in the video. They charge those companies to be in those ads. They pay you a little bit, and they keep the rest. That's how all these platforms make money. That's how they all work. That's how television works. That's how radio works. That's how anything in media works. Advertisements, commercials. That's exactly what you are, and that's how they view you. So you have to understand that I have to be on a platform where I'm going to eventually be able to put ads on there. Which platform is that for me? Which platform is the most 
consistent for me? Which platform in the morning when I check my phone is the first one that I go to? Which platform do I laugh the most? Which platform do I argue the most? Which platform makes me cry? Which platform do I want to share with other people? Which platform, if they had to take them all off of my phone, I got to keep this one and just that one. That's the one you need to be as good at as you possibly can. And to be good at these platforms, you got to learn these platforms. How do you learn these platforms? I tell all my clients this, everybody that needs my social media coaching, you got to take free courses. There are free courses all over. I got free courses on Skillshare. I got free courses on group82university.com. We probably going to have some courses on basketballceo.com. Or you got to get you a coach like me, somebody who's an expert in this stuff, and you really got to learn the ins and outs. So you need to... Research and study the exact same way you're doing with basketball, the exact same way you're doing with the classroom. You got to do this with social media, too. And I can tell you this. It's a lot more fun studying social media than it is studying biology. And even some people that teach basketball was so boring. When you learn about social media, way more fun. So invest in your education for social media. You want me to help coach you? Go visit our website. Go book a one-on-one coaching session with me right now. The second thing that you need to do if you want to get really good at social media and you want to get these NIL bags to really run up so you can get more followers, you have to pick a theme for your page. And when I'm saying theme, I'm not saying like you got to be a meme page, you got to be a nature page. I'm not saying that, right? You are a personality. You're an athlete. You're an influencer. You're a basketball player. People want you. This is something I really had to learn because I was putting the information first. Everything I was talking about in music marketing, music business, entrepreneurship, even basketball talk back then, the creator e- economy, stocks, finance, all these topics that I hit on my, on my YouTube channel, I thought people wanted the information. And they do want the information, but they want me. They want me to say it. It's one thing when they read it. It's another thing when Dorian Group 82 says it and delivers it to them. And it's the exact same thing with you. You're the star. They're coming to your social media page for you. So you have to make it as comfortable for you as you possibly can. Anybody that's been in the pond for a long time, you have heard me talk about what I'm about to talk about a multitude of times, and that's the three E's. What are the three E's? These are the three different ways that you can theme and brand your social media pages. The first E is education. That's what I do. I educate people on social media, educate them about all the things I said before. Right now, I'm educating you on how to get your NIL bag up as a basketball player. As a basketball player, someone who I think does a phenomenal job educating people from their social media is Phil Handy at the real 94 feet of game. He does a great job on Instagram. He's a great job on YouTube. He has so many videos where he's showing so many drills. He's working out with NBA players, WNBA players nationally ranked high school players, middle school players, people we've never seen because he is a teacher of the game. He uses his page to educate, and people want to be educated. People want to learn. There's always going to be an insatiable appetite for teachers who want to speak passionately about topics. You are a basketball player. You are an expert in a multitude of things, but specifically, you are an expert in basketball. So if you're somebody who wants to educate in basketball, do that. Let's say that you're an artist and you're also a basketball player. You want to educate in how you make your songs, do that. Let's say that you are someone who makes crafts and as, as well as being a basketball player. Make your page about education on how to build crafts. You could be like Miles Turner. He's an expert in building Legos. He can make his page about educating on how to build these complicated Lego figures. There's an audience for all of that, but you just have to be dedicated to being a teacher and being an educator. The second of the three E's is entertainment. That's essentially what we all see all the time. Someone who I think does a phenomenal job at entertaining on her social media is Fla J. Johnson, who plays for LSU. She's also a rapper. She's also an artist. But if you look at what she does with the ads on her page, if you look at what she shows in the studio behind the scenes, if you look at it when she's in the gym even working out, she got a beautiful jump shot. When she's in the middle of her workout, she comes over to the camera, she's an entertainer. If that's your personality, and that's what you do, this is the perfect platform for you. And she's dedicated to that. And she's not entertaining herself being a buffoon. 
She's not entertaining herself, making a mockery or a clown of herself. She is staying true to her roots. She's staying true to who she is, and it's paid off massive dividends for her after they won the national championship. Yes, Angel Reese was the talk of the town, but because she had been prepping her social media, because she had been an artist for a long time, because she had been used to being on camera and being an entertainer on her social media platforms, soon as the national championship came, soon as all that buzz and all that light and all that fanfare came, she was able to bring that attention to herself, which upped her social media followers, which upped her NIL deals. The third of the three E's is erotica. Erotica are people on social media that use what God has given them physically to bring attention to themselves. Now, you're an athlete. You're in the gym all the time. You're working out all the time. Your nutrition, for the most part, is on the up and up. We know how y'all really get down, but for the most part, it's on the up and up. And God has given you a lot of physical abilities, and he's given you a way that you look physically that people want to look at you. They want to stare at you. You're a basketball player. People are paying millions of dollars across the board to come look and stare at you. And they're not just looking and staring at you because of your basketball talent. They're not just looking and staring at you because of your basketball intellectual capital. They're not just looking and staring at you because you have a charismatic personality or you're really intelligent. They're looking and staring at you because they're having fantasies about you as well. And there are so many people across the board on social media, both men and women, who use this to their advantage. And there's pros and cons to this, which I'm pretty sure that you'll be able to piece together because if you put yourself out there as an erotica influencer where you're putting your looks before everything, that's all people are going to view you as. So if you're constantly just posting yourself in your swimsuit, you constantly just posting yourself with your shirt off, if you're constantly just posting yourself as a sex symbol, that's all you're ever going to be known as. And as your looks change, as your body changes, which happens to everybody, if your brand is completely dependent on that, now people ain't going to want to rock with you no more. What you got to do is you got to throw erotica in everything that you do. I know part of the reason that I'm able to get the following and the views that I get is because some people like the way that I look. Some people like the way that I talk. Some people like the energy that I give off. It turns them on. I'm not doing it on purpose. That's just who I am. That's how God made me. It just oozes out of me. Thank God for my genes from my mama and my daddy. You got the exact same thing, so use this to your advantage to up your NIL deals. When I first started making social media content, the first thing that I thought was going to be in my way was the fact that I didn't know how to edit videos. And I talked to one of my homeboys from back home who had his had a company that was actually an athletic apparel company. They made like essentially like the Under Armour type gear and they had socks and customized stuff. And he talked about how they had hired interns from a local college to come in and work on all their stuff and they didn't have to pay them. They gave them college credit and they went on with their lives. And I was thinking about when I was in college, I did a lot of internships. That was actually the first time I worked with the Pacers was through an internship for free when I was in college in the summer of 2005. And so... This strategy is the exact same strategy I took with making Group 82 and filming all the videos for that. Because I can film all day, but I didn't know how to edit. So what I did is I went and hired four video interns, and I gave them three videos a week to edit. So I knew every single week I had at least 12 videos that I could post. And these are long-form videos. Now, managing four interns was a lot, and things have changed drastically since then. So I'm not saying that you need to do that, but what I am saying is you need to hire a video editor. I'm not saying that you don't have the talent to edit videos, and it's easier to edit videos now than it's ever been. I know how to edit videos now. But regardless, anytime you sit down at a computer editing a video, that's time being taken away that you could be doing something else. Once again, you're the talent. People are coming to see you. You, you're in college because you're a basketball player. You got to be the best basketball player that you can. So why spend that time editing videos when you can get somebody else to do it for you? The first person I would go to is the video coordinator for your basketball team. 
And I know that they got a lot of stuff going on, but they got to make lifestyle content as well. So I would go talk to them and see if they can edit your video so you can have something to post every single day. If they don't, if they can't do it, you need to be looking at your GAs, your manager, or somebody else within the basketball organization that can edit the videos. If they ain't got nobody that can do that, then you need to go to the athletic department itself because every D Division I athletic department has someone who has to edit videos. You need to go talk to them to see if they can do it or if they got interns or if they got graduate assistants who can take that on. And if they don't give you any options, then you need to go look at your video editing courses that are being offered at your school. Because there are people at your school, these professors that are teaching video editing courses, they're teaching 30, 40, 50, 60 kids a semester how to edit videos, and they need subjects to edit videos. And you, being a basketball player, with all the social media followers that you're going to get, and with all the social currency that you have, they would love to edit your, your videos. And if they don't have anybody for you, then it's time for you to go to your audience and tell them that you're looking for a video editor. So go post on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, etc. Once you get someone to edit your videos, it makes everything so much easier for you because now you are the director and the producer of your content while simultaneously have somebody who has that video editing mind, who has that video editing lens. When you're a video editor, you start seeing content differently. You look at the lighting, you look at the color grading, you look at the transitions, you look at the effects, you look at all these things that the normal talent doesn't pay attention to because they might not be cognizant of it. And when you get someone that has these skills, I already know what you're thinking. The same thing I was thinking. I ain't got no money to pay no video editors, which was great for me because we had an internship program, so I didn't have to pay them. But what you have is something that I didn't even have at the, at the beginning. You're a Division I college basketball player. You're a D2 basketball player, D3. You have social currency. Everyone loves athletes. Everyone loves free gear. Everyone loves free tickets. Everyone loves getting behind the scene access of athletics that they never get a chance to. Everyone lo loves meeting former athletes, celebrities, NBA players, or other people that have social currency. What you're doing as a basketball player influencer, you're taking the social currency that God has given you and the university is cultivating around you and you're converting that social currency into financial currency. So although you might not be able to pay these interns a financial currency, the fact that you have your own social currency, you need to pay them in that. You need to treat them above and beyond to be able to give them something that's going to incentivize them to continue to edit these videos for you. And then once you pay them enough social currency, once you get enough content out there, once your NIL bags get big enough, then you will have money to actually pay them. And now it's just a snowball effect. And next thing you know, you hiring two, three, four, five interns, short form, long form, and you dominating this social media NIL space. But like I said, this isn't easy. It's not easy at all. And you need someone who understands this. You need someone who has been there. You need someone who understands the athlete's perspective the coach's perspective, because that's always what I am. It's been who I am since the beginning of my life. And you need someone who understands social media. That's why I'm here. And that's why I'm doing this. That's why I made this video, because I'm here to help. I'm here to help players. I love helping coaches. I love helping parents. But I'm here to help players. These people are coming to you and acting like you're a video editor. They come to you and act like your social media is magic. It don't work like that. This stuff takes a lot to get done, and you need someone who can coach you on that. So if you need help with that, and you serious about that, and you ready to run up these NIL bags, go to basketballceo.com or group82university.com, book a coaching session with me, let me know. If you see me on Instagram at Dorian Group 82 shoot me a DM over there, I'll hit you back. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. I'm out the pond. Y'all stay true. Oh,